Hi, I'm Mark Sip at Crocker Farm Auction, and we have an outstanding sale planned for you. This is our first sale of 2021. It runs from 10 a.m. on Friday, March 26th until 9 p.m. on Friday, April 9th, with the callback period on uh, April 10th for lots bringing $3,000 or more. You can see we have some fabulous things in this sale. There's a lot of new discoveries. There's a lot of iconic pieces that have been off the market for a while, um, re-emerging for sale. Um, headlining the group is this wonderful Boston jar with incised bird decoration. One of the uh, greatest pieces of Massachusetts stoneware known. You can see it was made for Mrs. Elizabeth Tarbell in 1806 uh, at the Charlestown, Massachusetts pottery that was operated by Frederick Carpenter. Um, this is believed to have been made by a family member of Tarbell while working at that shop. Wonderful classical form, and you can just see how fantastic it is. It's almost like a vase or a Grecian urn. Very thinly potted. We think of a lot of early Northeastern stone where it's fairly heavy and clunky. This thing almost reminds me of earthenware and its delicacy. Nice open loop handles. Wonderful incised floral decoration on the reverse. These fan-shaped flowers are closely related to those seen on the punch bowl that was made for Elizabeth Crane uh, in 1811 that's uh, currently in the American Folk Art Museum in New York City. Um, now, what's interesting is that's a Manhattan piece. This is a Boston piece. So there's um, possibly a connection there uh, between the potters, at the very least an influence of style but um, a really wonderful piece purchased by legendary dealer Bill Samaha directly from the family in the 1970s, sold to the consigner then. So this has been off the market for roughly 45 years. And we're just very excited to offer this um, in our spring 2021 auction. Another great in size work. It's another really special piece. Northeastern U.S. origin. This imaginatively decorated in size jug. Wonderful form. You can see it's this squat buggy jug or ship chandler's jug form, probably made uh, so it wouldn't tip either on a rocking ship or, or in, in a carriage of some sort. We have the incised deer on one side. And this is actually one of the most striking incised deer images that I can recall seeing on a piece of snowware. It's very large. A very well executed, has a certain dynamic stance with its raised leg and its turned head. Beautiful floral decoration on the front. This great design of a man smoking a pipe. You can even see him here uh, with smoke coming out of the pipe and he's pointing. He's got kind of a severe look on his face. Great image there. Incised bird above more floral designs, and then a very nice tree on the reverse. A real masterwork of incised decoration. This thing's just teeming with incised decoration. Very hard to find something like this with that much incised decoration on a single piece. A very nice New Jersey jar with an incised profile of a man. A nice Cushman piece. We have one of the most important uh, slipware plates from Connecticut, in our opinion. Uh, this wonderful loaf dish signed John Adams, uh, or inscribed for John Adams. Probably made for his uh, presidential candidacy in 1796. We believe it could be that early because of the difference in style from later Norwalk pieces. Um, but this is the only plate, you, you can find Washington, you can find some other names. This is the only uh, piece of slipware that we've seen with John Adams' name on it. And it's a wonderful loaf dish form with, with great green decoration, a really, really fabulous and important piece. Another interesting piece, this is a new discovery found in New England, is this Bristol County rundlet with slip shell bird decoration. And you might find birds in Pennsylvania pottery and um, you know maybe elsewhere, but to find a slip trailed bird motif from New England is exceptionally rare. Most of the potters 
for their hollow wear, just concentrated on making beautiful glazes and defined slip decoration is just uh, rare, very rare. Another great piece of slip wear, this Jackson Charger. This, like the Loaf Dish, the Adams Loaf Dish is a Norwalk Connecticut piece, and this one is more typical in Norwalk style with these looping lines and the color of the slip. Um, great size, really exuberant use of, of looping line decoration. Moving along, we have some great small pieces from Manhattan. These wonderful little oyster jars made by the African-American potter Thomas Conroy on Corlears Hook uh, sometime during the late 18th, early 19th century. We have this wonderful, this is a new discovery. This was purchased by the consigner's husband at a sale in Hudson, New York sometime during the 1960s. So this has been off the market for a very, very long time. Um, this beautiful, small-sized Manhattan jar, Crolius family, probably Clarkson Crolius. Nice open-handled form. This is the smallest open-handled jar uh, that we've seen with a bird on it from Manhattan. Really wonderful piece. And then the kicker, the really little interesting thing about it, other than the size, is this neat bird design with leaf or banner on the other on the underside. Really special piece surviving in remarkable condition. Certainly one of the best Manhattan birds that we've had. We've got a very interesting South Carolina dispensary jug. Late 19th century, Edgefield District, South Carolina. Classic late shoulder jug type form with this very rare impression SC with a palmetto and then dispensary below it. Wonderful condition on this piece, very rare. Some other very nice Comrade pieces, including a piece with his earliest maker's mark, N York Corley's hook. Very nice Edgefield slip decorated pieces. Down here we have some smalls um, and this wonderful little one gallon lion's jar with a rabbit. Rare design, you don't see too many rabbits, especially this quality. You can see it has these spots on it. Um, very much a, a Rochester influence design, the way this groundwork's done. Great size jar, wonderful figure deco figural decoration and really great color. Must have a very rare Croc with an African-American man's bust on it from Fort Edward, New York. Um, and some of our research indicates that Fort Edward, New York in its day was a real hotbed of abolition and uh, African-American rights. It was uh, a place where the, a lot of famous figures gave speeches and um, we think it's, that, that that possibly connects uh, this jar to uh, a period shortly after the Civil War, uh, when African-Americans were still fighting for their freedom in this country. So the beautiful, very distinctive Solomon Lloyd dish made in Alamance County, North Carolina, sometime around 1825, 1840. Beautiful slip decoration on it. Very, very distinctive, uh, the way that he did that, that, that slip arc on it. It has a very modern feel, very abstract feel, um, but it was made in a, in a country potting tradition. Beautiful use of green. You can see this wonderful green throughout it that just really pops. Here's a, a rare North Carolina pitcher made at the Dix Pottery uh, in Randolph County, North Carolina. Late 19th, early 20th century. Some other very interesting Southern Smalls, including this mother jar from Tennessee. Below, we have more great Edgefield pottery, a very striking Norton deer decorated crock. You can see just how bold this slip is, this enamel-like slip work on it. More great figural decorations below. I'm gonna pull this piece out. This is a, uh, possibly a, a unique piece. We have this great fully developed ship 
with lighthouse and flag, and then an island over here. Really, really neat piece, very different. North Bay Rabbit, classic stencil design from that area, a Norton house. Moving along. Actually, I'm gonna pull this guy out. An exceptionally rare Gordon Robinson Company Fayetteville three gallon jug. And this is the earliest North Carolina stoneware mark, uh, maker's mark. You can see just how closely related this is to the Webster family's Hartford, Connecticut training with this tooled spout and this semi ovoid form. Some 20th century pottery by the Metters family, including this fabulous, extremely rare Cheever Metters face jug with quartz eyes. Very distinctive eye treatment. This was found in a barn out in the Midwest, maybe about 40 years ago. Cheever, of course, was the father of Lanier and very few of his face jugs have survived. Next to it, we have an extremely rare early Lanier Metters face jug that has rock eyes related to what his father Cheever was doing. And Lanier very rarely um, was kind of an early, early prototype style of eye construction that, that he did on those pieces. Um, you don't you don't find rock eyes on uh, on Lanier Metters work very often at all. This is another wonderful piece with fabulous eye treatment. You can see it has this, these weeping eyes. This was made by Berlin Craig. There's his maker's mark on the underside, BB Craig, Vale NC, made about 1975. And um, other than the weeping eye treatment on this, the, the form is also what makes it stand out. Normally you see jugs by Berlin Craig to see a, a vase, this beautiful face vase. Uh, form is, is highly unusual in his work. So this is one of the, the best examples of, of Berlin Craig's work that, that we have sold. A, a, a 20th century potter whose, whose uh, pieces continue to increase in value. Some other great Southern pieces, including an ex extremely rare uh, Hugh Robbins Marshall jar made in Baltimore during the early 1820s. An Ernest and Coles jar uh, from Baltimore from the mid 1820s. Some other interesting Southern pieces, including a Sand Mountain jar and a Smith jar. We have this very interesting bank here that was uh, probably made at the Timmerman Pottery in Lanier County, Georgia. Very distinctive cobalt stripe decoration over that light clay that they. Uh, used down there and then covered in an alkaline glaze. Nice Jesse Vestal jar. Dated 1880. And uh, this extremely rare GW Bedsall jar from Piper's Gap, Virginia with nice sine wave decoration around the shoulder. We have some John Bell on the base. We have a lot of really nice John Bell pieces in the sale. Some more over here. Beautiful mocha decorated flower pot from Pennsylvania. It has this classic seaweed fan decoration inspired by English ceramics. A beautiful copper decorated jar that was made by either Peter or John Bell in Hagerstown. Really fabulous glaze on this. You can see this really interesting peach colored glaze surface. There's a bunch of white modeling throughout and then this beautiful copper splashing around the shoulder. Very elegant form. Some more Pennsylvania redware, including a nice John Bell pitcher. This example bears one of his maker's marks used between 1840 and 1880, John Bell. 
We have more John Bell pottery, including this rare soap dish. Some Pennsylvania slipware down here. Moving along, some very nice Midwestern pottery or Southern pottery. Um, this being a uh, Kentucky made jar, made at the J.H. Uh, Miller Pottery, Brandenburg, Kentucky for J.M. Cleek, Sacramento, Kentucky. A really wonderful folk art canning jar from Ohio with a stylized cat design. Really folky cat, kind of a serious look on his face. And just in case you didn't know what it was, the potter has inscribed, this is a cat at the base. Very fun piece. Wonderful selection of Anna Pottery pig bottles. I mentioned in the video that I did on these, these are two of the best salt glazed pig bottles we've ever handled. This example featuring really nice uh, script and these wonderful bright blue raised eyes. This example featuring very rare George advertising. This is also a fine example down here, side Anna Potter with an 1876 date. And this is a very rare Henry Thomas Louisville, Kentucky pig modeled after the Anna Pottery work about 1875. A nice selection of Ohio harvest jugs, some more redware, an interesting vase and an interesting pitcher by a potter that Brandt recently discovered named Emmanuel Duchak, who uh, worked in Chicago, Illinois. We have a wonderful selection of Calvin Wilcox stoneware this time around, including this very cool clown jar. Very fun, whimsical design. A nice John Young slip trail jug, stamped Harrisburg, PA. Very rare T.H. Wilson pitcher. This is the first signed T.H. Wilson pitcher we, we've had, and this is a really nice two-gallon size. Some Calvin Birds. One of the most sculptural pieces in the sale is this fabulous Remy puzzle mug. You can see all the piercing and all the spouts. These spouts on the handle even work. Very cool piece, surviving in immaculate condition. This thing was just kind of um, destined to be broken with all these applied pieces on it, but it survives in immaculate condition. Got some nice Western Pennsylvania stoneware, including this fabulous Jay Littell. Beautiful freehand brushwork, a nice stenciling. Some pictures by Gene A. Black. Summerfield, Pennsylvania. As always, we have a nice selection of Valley Pottery in Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, including this very rare chicken and bird decorated jar. Classic Everly Lamb. Some nice multi-glaze, including this cute little jar here that has copper decoration over a scrottled clay ground. Espel and Sun multi-glaze cream jar. Some more Southern pottery uh, here, including a uh, Airy Metters teapot. It's a nice Pennsylvania plate with some slip decoration on it. A pair of B.B. Craig vases and um, some other various pieces here. Moving along, we have a nice selection of redware from throughout the country, including a pitcher and bowl set from the Shenandoah Valley, some slip decorated plates, and some nice Northeastern slip decorated pieces. Moving along, we have one of the most iconic and sized decorations in American stoneware. This piece was famously owned by Barry Cohen who was probably the most selective, most discriminating stoneware collector of all time. This piece really spoke to him. It's been exhibited since 1975 at 
Williamsburg, it was also in the 2005 exhibit, American Fancy, Basil Sumter Pretty's uh, groundbreaking book uh, on the subject. You can see it has this wonderful design of a person looking between his legs. Nice detail to the face, eyes on his rear end. And this was made in Albany, New York during the early 19th century. An iconic piece that many collectors are familiar with. Been off the market for quite a while. We also have one of the most interesting examples of Rochester stoneware that we've ever handled, certainly one of the rarest, and that's this lion decorated cooler. This is a jug form cooler with an unusually wide top. It's the only example of this form that we've seen from Rochester. And the design obviously is just fabulous. You know, you, it speaks for itself, this wonderful lion design. So this piece really combines iconic decoration with extremely rare form. Um, really a, a double whammy kind of piece. We also have a very nice J&E Norton five gallon croc with a deer and house scene. Just like the, the lion from uh, Rochester, these deer designs from the Nortons are, are one of the more iconic Northeastern design. You know, if you if you think of Northeastern slip trail decoration, one of the first designs that comes to mind are these deer that they did. This piece is nice because it includes uh, a house, a large house and the decoration, great large size to it, five gallons. This piece is possibly unique it's a Jay Shepherd Gettys, New York, four gallon cream jar made about 1858 with 32 stars on it. One of the best slip trail representations of the American flag that we've seen in American stoneware. Very, very cool piece. A Weiss Utica two gallon jar, very closely related to what was being produced uh, at the Norton Pottery in Bennington. You see it's got the pine tree, much like this j &E Norton five gallon, great ground cover, a fence, really great coverage of the design over the vessel's front. Another iconic design from the Northeast, the star face. Most collectors are familiar with the star face design. Uh, it was done by Thompson, Harrington and Lyons about 1860. It's a great churn uh, form with that design with excellent coverage on the front. You can see it's a six gallon piece, very tall rectilinear piece. And this pointed star, this eight pointed star with the face of the center really covers the front nicely and is executed in crisp cobalt. Moving along, I have some great face vessels. You can see this is a fairly typical brown pottery piece. A little bit smaller than you normally see, nice modeling on it. This example was made in Alabama or Georgia. Has China teeth, nice size. You can see it's fairly large, but then what really takes the cake, the masterpiece out of the group is this example from Alabama. Wonderful size, classic torso form that was produced in that state. Albany slip glaze with salt glaze over top. So you have this really interesting modeling in the color has this well-developed jacket, China eyes, teeth, and buttons. This piece was recently found in the Pacific Northwest, and we believe is soon as a soon-to-be icon of figural stoneware from the state of Alabama. We have another Dave jar in this sale. This example has his signature on it, Dave, along with the date, August 5th, 1851. Very robust ovoid form with an unusually narrow collar and it measures nine gallons. So this example is actually a gallon larger than the piece that we sold last year that at the time set a record for Dave Stoneware. You can see the inscription LM and the horseshoe on the reverse 
Uh, LM referring to Lewis Miles, the owner of the Stony Bluff Manufactory, where this jar was made. So a lot of great Edgefield stoneware in this sale. Of course, one of the uh, leaders of the pack is this extremely rare, rare Harry jar. This four gallon jar by Harry, an enslaved potter working at Pottersville. We have him documented from 1839 to 1843. Um, he, he may have been there earlier, even longer. This is one of only two examples signed by Harry known. You can see it has a horseshoe impression at the base, four punctates at the shoulder. To have another enslaved potter signing his way other than Dave, or actually, no, there's two now. So there's actually a body of work developing for this figure is really remarkable. And if you compare the two, you can see how the handles are different. Um, you can see these thick handles that sit closer to the body. This we really feel is gonna be a diagnostic tool for determining more pieces by Harry. And there's actually a attributed jar in this sale. We've actually found another jar that's unsigned that has a horseshoe and punctates that is firmly attributed to Harry based on this jar. Here's a great Dave pot in size LM with a horseshoe and slash. Wonderful celadon glaze over a reddish brown ground. Look at these, look at these drips. Really, really fabulously glazed piece. You know, absolutely beautiful. Really one of the best examples of glaze from, from this potter um, that we've offered. Moving along. Have an imaginatively incised Manhattan pitcher. You can see how the decorator has done this alternating leaf design, this wavy incising inside the leaves. Uh, one leaf's hollow with blue around it, the other has blue on the interior and is hollow around that. And then there's all sorts of intricate incising throughout this design. Very cool piece. Couple classic Boston jars by Jonathan Fenton from the late 18th century. Great jar with impressed fish design. A great jar with impressed foil design and rare double stamp of the Boston maker's mark. They exhibit that classic early Boston form with the narrow mouth, nice tooling and these open handles. In our opinion, Fenton had some of the most graceful forms in all of American stoneware. Very, very uh, beautiful pieces. There's a scarce Capron jar. This was once owned uh, by the Nadelmans, iconic New York City collectors. It's a bird on one side and a flower on the reverse. A beautiful N. Clark and Company lion's jar with incised decoration. And you can see just how special this piece is with these grapes, the central sunflower, this use of stamping as well as freehand incising. Even the handles have these details. Wonderful piece. Probably made as a presentation object. I can't imagine a potter making that and just selling it as standard wear. Another great N. Clark piece from Lyons is this bird. Really Wonderful form, this fat bodied bird in a preening stance, has a ringed neck and a crest. And you can see the body is brushed over in cobalt and then spotted over in heavier cobalt with this very, very unusual and striking treatment that worked, worked exceptionally well. I'm sure when the potter pulled this out, um, he was pleased with his result. Very even firing, very strong color, date 1827 on the reverse. Wonderful David Morgan jar, very mysterious potter from Corley's Hook in Manhattan. This was made during the late 18th or early 19th century, and it features David Morgan's rarer mark. Now, David Morgan's standard mark is even rare. The David Morgan New York stamp is rare. There's, there's not many of those in existence. This example, there's only a few that we know of that say D. Morgan and York. This has a Comoral-inspired Drape design, what a lot of collectors refer to as clamshell design, features fabulous color.
really, really striking color that you don't typically see uh, on Morgan's work. A nice Seymour Troy cooler, two great big birds from New York State and Clark Jr. from Athens. This Ford Edward Pottery Company piece has electric blue and a, a really, really large size design uh, covering the front. Moving along, we have this great in size ship jar inscribed AGP, made in Albany, New York during the very early 19th century. And it's actually flying a British flag, which is unusual. <laughs> and uh, has exceptional detail, multi-storied ship with, with numerous windows, all kinds of detail throughout. This piece was once owned by Bill Guffman and it sold at Sotheby's years ago. Stamped Stebden Seymour from New Haven with a Federal Eagle. Unusual heart-shaped shield on the front uh, with uh, stars and stripes. And he's holding uh, olive branches, an olive branch and arrows here. Um, moving along, here's that uh, attributed hairy jar that I'd mentioned before. You can see these handles, these really distinctive handles. And then we have the punctates here at the shoulder, a horseshoe at the base, and uh, very, very, very closely related form and glaze, including a wide shoulder. You can see how this shoulder really bellies out to a flat rim and then a narrow base. Another exceptionally rare Edgefield jar, N. Ramey and Company. Nathaniel Ramey was involved in the ownership of the Pottersville Pottery. And there's a few of these in existence. Interesting tooling throughout too. It has these incised lines going through it. Here's a large six gallon jar attributed to Lewis Miles Stony Bluff Manufactory. Beautiful glaze on this piece. Reminiscent of that LM jar that I showed earlier. It has this brown ground with this uh, green going throughout it, dripping, pouring, very dynamic glaze. And it has uh, six punctates and an incised horseshoe at the shoulder. Um, also of note, we have some other great Northeastern pieces from New York State and New York City. A great high Seymour Troy factory with a well-detailed bird on it. Uh, a very well detailed jar, Albany, New York, early 19th century with a bird and floral motif. Um, we have a wonderful Comrade jar with impressed decoration, Comrade jug, sorry. A Northeastern jar, probably New Jersey, with this interesting toothed bird on it. Almost a Goonie bird with that crest on his head. A fabulous, this is, this is as early as it gets for Baltimore stoneware. This Baltimore Union stoneware manufactory piece. This is um, as elaborate and ornate as it gets for that period in Baltimore stoneware production. This is clearly an English inspired piece with a rust dip. And we start to see the emergence of cobalt around the handles and on the maker's mark and on the capacity mark. And this piece dates from somewhere around 1810, exceptionally early. Um, we believe this is the earliest Southern stoneware maker's mark, that there's, there's no other maker's mark for a piece of stoneware made south of the Mason-Dixon line that is earlier than this. The, the quadruple stamping is We've never seen that on, on, on those before, but, but then again, there's only about five known, so it's exceptionally rare. A great Philadelphia Charger, excellent size. A wonderful John Bell jar inscribed by the potter. You can see it has this classic John Bell treatment. You don't really see it anywhere else. Unglazed exterior, lead and manganese floral decoration. Dated 1875 under each handle. Looks like a Bell family member potted it, you know, classic Bell form. But it's actually made by an itinerant potter, and you can see the inscription on the bottom. This crock was made by Daniel Kaufman, Burlington, Vermont, September the 14th, 1875. And then it's signed Victor C. Bell. So Victor C. Bell uh, made a point 
to inscribe the maker of this jar on. The maker didn't sign it. Victor Seabell signed it for him. Um, we know uh, from family history that Victor Bell severed an artery in his wrist and it made it really difficult for him to pot. And so he was a decorator at the Bell family pottery. And this design was done by him for a jar that was potted by this uh, Vermont itinerant potter, Daniel Kaufman. Great John Bell pitcher, wonderful two gallon chicken water, classic Remy color and decoration and form. Great size on that. A really special kind of Wilcox water cooler. I think it's possibly a wine cooler and that the narrow spout would keep the, the wine from oxidizing. Um, it has grapes on it, you know, which could, could also be representative of wine. This is the only jug form cooler that we've seen from Calvin Wilcox. And it's also uh, potted in an exceptional size, roughly five to six gallons, which I've never seen a jug form from that pottery that was that large. So this kind of combines form, size, decoration, and maker. Um, you can see it next to this jug mark four, just how much larger it is. Some nice cow and birds, including one with a worm in his mouth. An interesting Ohio jug with some interesting figural incising around it. We have a horse, a tree, various other designs, various U's and F's, the meaning of which currently is unknown. And then on this side, a really wonderful incised image of a woman in a dress. Wonderful folk art piece. Another folk art piece is this wonderful strutting rooster design with corn in front of it, really boldly brushed, much different than what you find in uh, the Northeastern US, but a, a very wonderful uh, striking image. Uh, moving into the the center room here. There's some rare Rhodes pieces from the Edgefield District of South Carolina. This one has a slip signature. This one has an incised script signature. This method of signature is actually much rarer than this, and these are rare in and of themselves, but you can see with this backwards S, this was not incised by the typical decorator that would have slip trailed the, the, the C. Rhodes maker name on pieces. This was done by a pottery worker who was trying to emulate uh, that signature, uh, possibly an enslaved craftsman. Um, very, very interesting piece, the way that that's done. A wonderful C. Rhodes maker double-handled jug. You can see the classic slip trail signature there. Fabulous decoration on the reverse. The five within a flower and then it actually has five slashes also indicating five gallons. Exceptional form, wonderful decoration. A rare trap and chandler slip trail jar made at the short-lived pottery of John Trapp and Thomas Chandler. Classic Chandler slip work on that. Nice celadon color behind it. A great Chandler jar. You can see just how big this jar is. Um, you know, compared to this, it's a real monster. And that has classic Chandler slip trailing on it and even some really interesting fingerprint uh, at the base and heavy glaze runs on the front. There's a Chester Webster jar, another great Southern object, very distinctive, made about 1875 with an incised bird on it. This was made in Randolph County, North Carolina. And again, you know, after all those years of being in North Carolina, he's still doing things in the Hartford tradition by doing incised decoration, which is something that's exceptionally rare on Southern made pottery. 
Moving around here. There's some really nice things on the shelves, including some white pieces with dates. Some nice English inspired pieces on the second shelf. More Northeastern slip trailing. There we have some Manhattan pieces up here, including an interesting Crolius jar. The different size flower on the back. It's a very nice Edgefield pottery, including an attributed Dave jar. Moving along, some other Northeastern pieces with very nice slip trailing. More slip trail pieces, more Edgefield pieces here on the top shelf. We have some uh, South Carolina jars here. Some Philadelphia pieces. Very nice Philadelphia advertising jar right here. This is possibly the best advertising jar that we've had from Philly. More Pennsylvania pottery. Additional Pennsylvania pottery, including some really nice Calvin examples. You can see this piece with these apples coming out of a branch. This with a, a floral and berry motif. Very nice Hamilton from Greensboro bearing an early stamp. Some Shenandoah pottery below by Eberly and Hickerson. A nice Solomon Bell jar. More Calvin pieces. Western Pennsylvania pottery down there at the bottom. Moving along, we have some bird decorated pieces, including a C.W. Braun Buffalo jug, some John Bell down here. A really beautifully decorated Westerwald jar. This would be a, a masterwork if it were American. Wonderful with that leaping deer and, and bird design. A couple eagles, including one inscribed Union and Liberty from Fort Edward. Very unusual. Eagles by this pottery are unusual to find one. Uh, in size Union Liberty is, is very rare. We got some stats of Western Pennsylvania pottery, some Windinger pitchers, some other mixed cobalt decorated pieces. Over here we have a large selection of Western PA stencil pottery. And then moving over here to this wonderful loaf dish. I want to show this to you all. This is one of the best loaf dishes we've ever had. It survives in immaculate condition, exceptional size, really bold slip. Ex Sotheby's. Um, this was made in Philly during the late 18th, early 19th century. Fabulous example of a form that's often found with significant damage. Uh, then moving on, let's do this jug. We have a Robert Mathis jug during his ownership of the Pottersville Pottery. You can see impressed uh, five slash marks at the top. Great double handled jug form, one of the most desirable forms uh, from that region. And then moving over here, we have a great jar. If you're a collector of American stoneware, which a lot of you are, you should buy this piece. This was famously owned by John Martinelli back in the 70s or 80s. Made in Ohio, probably sometime around 1876, touting American-made wear. A wonderful piece. And segueing from that, American stoneware is this incredible 50-gallon jug cooler featuring the most famous American of all, George Washington. You can see it's 50 gallons, and we believe that Capacity is close to actual. You can see just how big it is compared to this six gallon crock. This six gallon crock is completely dwarfed by this masterpiece. We have a painterly image, a portrait of George Washington, probably taken from a Gilbert Stewart portrait. It's initialed by the artist. If you get around and look at the handles, you see these interesting grooved handles.
This was probably made in Ohio. Um, it was actually acquired, it, it was descended a family. Um, somebody, uh, the history of it goes back to the 1920s, but it was acquired by the current owners in the 1970s. And when they purchased it, it was in somebody's backyard under a bush. So how long it had been under the bush, who knows? But apparently this, uh, this bush or small tree had protected it over the years. It's really in wonderful condition with just some lines going around it, which um, were probably in the making. Uh, we're very excited about this auction. I really want to thank you for joining us. We have some fabulous things in this sale uh, that I don't think we'll have anything like ever again. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you're interested, you can uh, contact us, talk to directly to a member of the Zip family at 410-472-2016 or email us at info at crockerfarm.com. Thank you again for joining us.